Hello and welcome to the first module for the Front End Fundamentals course. I'm Matt Landers and I'm joined with Will Johnston and we're going to be walking you through how websites work. So let's dive right in. So the concepts that we're going to cover in this video are internet protocol, so TCP IP, which uh, includes your IP address, which you might have heard before and we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the hyper transfer or hypertext transfer protocol. Uh, HTTP, which you've seen in the URL whenever you browse a website. Uh, domain name servers, which is kind of like the, an address book of how we get to websites. And web servers and how they work. So let's dive right in and look at some examples. So when we're in a browser, we type in, um, you know, like google.com, and that takes us to the web page. And so you probably don't really understand how that's actually working. But whenever you type that in, it's like sending mail to an address. You, the browser has to look up and say, where does this website live? And in order to do that, it uses TCP IP and IP addresses that it looks up through the domain name server. So domain name servers are an address book for websites. So what the browser does is it looks up this uh, domain on this server that is this and a server is just a computer that's hosting information and whenever uh, it goes out there it gives it back an IP address so let's look at what that looks like in the terminal window so I'm just gonna open this up and make it a little bit bigger so if you do this on Mac or Windows or anything and you open a terminal or command prompt you can actually ping a website so if I say ping google.com I'm going to get Google's address, essentially. So it's like a mailing address, but it's just for the internet. And this is a uh, IP address. It's just four sets of numbers from uh, 0 to 255. And this serves as the um, address for that website. So if I copy this and just paste it into the browser, and it, now we're just putting this IP address in here. We're not putting google.com or anything, but what you'll notice is that it goes to google.com. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Now we know kind of how this is working. A, a domain, so a google.com, is associated to an address or set of addresses. And that's how this is working. Now some of them are shared. So if you do this and you pick a random website and you put the IP address in and it doesn't work, uh, then that means that that IP address is probably shared with a lot of different websites. But Google is big and they have their own servers, so this will, this will work. Um, you also have an IP address at home. So if right. you have a, you know, an internet service provider, you can go on to Google and you can say, what is my IP? And you'll get your IP address. And there we go. So this is the IP address to where we're at right now, Covalence HQ. Go ahead and start hacking. <laughs> Uh, you can type that in and you'll see your IP address and that's how the server communicates back to you. You're communicating over these addresses. So once we've got the address, we have to actually tell that uh, server that we're hitting what we want to get. So in this case, we just have google.com here, but for other sites, let's go to covalence.io. In this case, we're telling the server that we just want covalence.io, so that gives us the home page. But whenever we click around in here, we're telling the server to give us other things. And this protocol that we're using here is called HTTP uh, or HTTPS. They're the same, just one's secure and one's not. Uh, most sites these days are using HTTPS, and all of your sites will in the future as we teach you about that. But hypertext transfer protocol is how we tell the server what we want to get back in response. So we say, hey, I want to go get this URL. And part of this URL, it sends back a lot of different files. So a web server is just hosting files that get sent back to the browser, and the browser knows how to interpret them. And if we hit Command Option I or F12 on Windows, we can get a cool little debugger window here in our browser and go to the network resources. And when I refresh, it'll show me all the files that are being served from that web server. Now, if we had all these files locally on our computer, we could just open up, open those up locally and it would still work in most cases. 
But there's all these files from images to scripts, so JavaScript and HTML, which we're, and CSS, which we're going to get in here to here shortly. But all that that that's all that's happening over HTTP. It goes out to the server. The server says, "Here's what you need. Here's all the resources and files and things that you need in order to view this web page that you've tried to hit." And it sends those back individually and the browser puts them together and shows them to us the way that we expect to see them. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy. These are all unique requests that we're making for all these different files. And it's still working and the page loads, you know, in a number of seconds. Right, and we can even see how big they are. So if you have a site that's running slow, you can come over here and see, you know, do you have files that are too big? A lot of times people put images up that are too large and you can resize those. So there's a lot of different um, things that get sent across the wire. But for now, just know that when you type in a domain, it goes to the internet address book, which is DNS or domain name server, sends back the address in the form of an IP address, hits that web server, over HTTP hypertext transfer protocol and then sends back all the files that you need to view that web uh, address. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you don't have to really know that inside and out. We just want you to have this concept of that it's just not magic out there. Mm -hmm. There are servers, you're hitting them, they have files on them. Think of it like um, if you had a Word document or any kind of file, text documents, music, whatever that is, on your computer, and I was trying to get them off of your computer, it's like a URL saying, hey, this is where they are on my computer, and then your computer just sends those files back over. That's all that's happening here. So you need to know that so that you understand that as we start working with files in our code, you'll understand that the browser is just looking at that file exactly as it is, sending it over, and then interpreting it and making sense of it. So. We're gonna dive into the three different types of files that make up a basic website over the next few videos and um, get you kind of started on how we're going to jump into the coding world. So it's gonna be fun, stick with it. It's gonna to be tough, but that's okay. You're gonna get it. So we'll see you in the next video.